So try and look into the ring of light. Looks pretty good. As it gets closer, it'll look like a, a tunnel of light. That looks really good. So just do your best to look straight into there. This is the part where you're going to become aware of a pressure feeling. And as the pressure goes up, you typically lose vision. Here, the first vacuum is engaged with the suction ring on the eye. Right, suction on, please. That's the pressure feeling. The second vacuum is automatically engaged, and this is when the cone applanates the cornea within the suction ring. Initially, the bar indicates red, but as the suction improves, it changes through yellow to green. Once the bar is green, the digital flap overlay appears and can now be manipulated using the keyboard or controls. The Femto second commences first with the tunnel, and because the spotline separation is finer at a higher resolution, the progress is much slower at a depth of 200 microns. For a routine LASIK flap at 100 or 120 microns, the time taken to create the flap is typically 6 to 7 seconds, but here at 200 microns it takes about 3 times longer. Once the flap is completed, the suction automatically disengages. Very, very well done. Now under the EX500. Three, three and a half seconds. Right, you're doing great. Just keep on looking straight ahead, just like that. With the use of the eye tracker, the right foot pedal is pressed. This results in a red beam marking the cornea at the centre of the ablation. We decenter the ablation to usually halfway between the corneal apex and the center of the pupil. Pressing the right foot pedal now marks the exact location of where the camera needs to be centered. This point is now marked with ink and the right foot pedal is pressed again to validate the ink mark. All right, you're gonna be aware of some manipulation on the surface. The flap is now lifted using a Rycroft cannula and tacoed upon itself. All right, look straight ahead like that. That's it's very, very good. Centered. Great, perfect. Here we go. Don't start. Just three seconds starting now. Right, fantastic. Using BSS, the flap is now replaced onto the corneal bed and any debris is rinsed away. The flap is gently brushed with a wax cell sponge to iron out any microfolds and create a flap memory. Now we are ready to inspect the camera inlay. The shiny side faces posteriorly and the inlay should extend by about 50% from the forcep. The flap is gently reflected and the inlay is placed over the pupil. One can see the ink mark on the back of the flap. The flap is then gently replaced with a wax cell sponge. The slit lamp is used to determine whether the inlay is perfectly positioned. Bang on the dot. I'm not going to move anything. I'm going to check it, but I'm not going to move anything. I'm just going to squeeze it. You just can feel some cold water on the surface. Excess bubbles are removed by gently irrigating under the flap again without disturbing the inlay. That looks pretty good. You're doing very, very nice. You just keep it nice and steady. Right, suction on, please. Now a Femto Pocket is going to be created. Pocket software is not currently available on FS200, therefore, customized adjustments on the current software are used to create a pocket. Very good, hold it just like that. The flap dimensions have been changed to include a much wider channel and a smaller diameter flap of 6 mm.
The edge cut is reduced to 0.1 millijoules, which means that no edge cut ensues and we now have our pocket. The gas bubbles are now gently expressed. The eye tracker is once again engaged to determine where the inlay should be placed. Yeah. All right, just keep on looking straight at as best you can. One can see the ink mark where the inlay should be centered. Now at the 12 o'clock position, an attempt is being made to gain access to the channel. This can be quite difficult as it is easy to lift the epithelium. Once access to the channel is achieved, the channel area is cleared in order to gain access to the pocket. All adhesions in this area are freed in order to create a space in which it will be easy to manipulate the inlay. One can now see a nice wide central pocket over the pupil with access through the wide channel. The inlay is now grasped in the forcep, and for pocket surgery the inlay is mostly covered by the forceps. An instrument is used in the left hand in order to gain access to the pocket, and the inlay is placed under this instrument and glided into the pocket. In this particular case we can see that the inlay is folded over on the nasal side and will have to be smoothed out later during the procedure. The forcep is quite bulky and is quite difficult to open while in the pocket to release the inlay. The patient was asked to look down to make it easier. James, just look slightly down please, just slightly down, that's great. The inlay is released and the forcep removed. And now I can look straight ahead again, now I need the soft diffuser. Once again we can see that the inlay is folded over on the nasal side. An irrigating cannula is placed into the pocket in order to gently unfold and smooth out the inlay. It did not take too much manipulation to achieve this, however one can see that the inlay is still placed too nasally with respect to the corneal mark. Some more BSS in there. Some more BSS. The same cannula is now going to be used to gently move the inlay to the desired position. Very, very well. We're just positioning it. It's in the it's in the little pocket. Finally, the slit lamp is used to verify that the inlay is perfectly positioned. Let's try it. 